SpaceX is preparing for the first ever flight test of the Super Heavy. Super Heavy Booster 3 went through a cryogenic ground test early this month, and they were a resounding success. But with Super Heavy Booster 4, we will be seeing the full Starship platform in action for the first time. The second stage, the Starship itself, was last successfully tested in May of this year. The Starship SM-15 successfully landed after reaching an altitude of 10 kilometers at suborbital pad A in Boca Chica, Texas. The total flight time came to be about 5 minutes and 59 seconds. This was a landmark achievement for SpaceX. Now, the upcoming flight test will be putting both the Starship and Super Heavy in the spotlight, and we will see the whole platform perform together. In the meantime, let us take a brief look at the Starship SN20 currently sitting on top of the Super Heavy Booster 4, getting ready for its launch. Let us take a look at SpaceX's new refreshed Starship. If we take a look at the current pictures of the SN20 stacked on top of the Super Heavy, the first thing we will notice is how tall the whole assembly is. In fact, if we purely talk about the length, we know that both stages stacked on each other make the total height of the Starship about 120 meters. This makes the Starship the longest rocket ever made, beating the SLS Block II cargo and Saturn V by approximately 9 meters. For those of you who aren't as much in the loop about SpaceX and Starship, Starship is the combined upper stage, spacecraft, tanker, and lander of a two-stage, fully reusable rocket with the same name. The first and second stages both combine to make it 120 meters tall. Super Heavy is the name of the booster stage. This is the first stage that will separate and fall back to Earth and land. Another thing that pops out about the SN20 is those black hexagonal tiles. The Starship is using a heat shield made up of almost 15,000 ceramic tiles. These are the heat shields SpaceX has been working on for years. They have been mounted to one side of the Starship's second stage, so that when the second stage falls back to Earth, it is thermally protected on the side facing downwards. In theory, Starship's structure can withstand and remain functional at temperatures approaching 800 degrees Celsius, but upon re-entry, we will be seeing much higher temperatures. SpaceX has been building, testing, and refining Starship's heat shield technology for more than two years now. Elon Musk first gave the public a small glimpse of these heat shields back in March of 2019 when he tweeted a video of these heat shields being lit up with a blowtorch. The hottest part of the tiles withstood temperatures of 1650 Kelvin. SpaceX's custom-built ceramic tiles were first used in July and August of 2019. They were mounted onto a SpaceX Cargo Dragon spacecraft. They were also mounted on the Starhoppers for a top test a few weeks later. The SN20 is the first Starship that will be using these hexagonal-shaped black heat shields. The SN20 is equipped with six Raptor engines, with three sea-level Raptor engines, while three are vacuum-optimized Raptor engines. We also saw that the Super Heavy 4 had 29 Raptor engines mounted on it. The Raptor engines mounted to the Super Heavy 4 were in a 2010-1 configuration. Another interesting thing to note about the Raptor engines mounted to the Super Heavy 4 is that some of the engines underneath the Super Heavy have a totally white interior. This suggests that these engines have never been test-fired. A ground test would have made these engines all black and full of soot, as with the other engines that go through testing. According to Elon Musk's tweet on the 19th of August, SpaceX is fixing a small error they found with the current design of the Starship's forward flaps. These flaps are instrumental in controlling the vehicle's angle of attack as the Starship comes back to Earth. To understand what we mean by this, we have to look at how the Starship performs its landing procedures. The Starship, on its way back to the Earth, essentially free-falls to the ground for the last few dozen kilometers, and then performs a very aggressive flipping maneuver. This is done so that the Starship comes into a vertical orientation when facing the landing pad. Then, it retropropulsively slows down itself to land. In the future, the Starship won't land on its feet but rather be caught by giant robotic arms, but I digress. Getting back to the flaps, these are the things that help orient the Starship when it is falling towards the ground. They're essentially small oars like on a rowboat, and they help Starship to redirect when it's falling down. According to Elon Musk, Two of the four flaps that largely make that exotic maneuver possible need to be redesigned. According to Musk, this redesign will improve the moment arm of Starship's forward flaps and also reduce or remove undesirable aerodynamic characteristics 
that these flaps were causing. SpaceX will also shrink those forward flaps, move them closer together and more towards the tip of Starship's nose, and angle them toward the ship's leeward side. The Super Heavy 4 itself has four massive grid fins, but these are monstrous grid fins almost weighing three tons for a single fin. These are a little different from the grid fins we saw on Falcon 9, since these grid fins don't fold in as the fins do on Falcon 9. They can still roll about their axis and help the Super Heavy orient its landing, but they don't fold inwards and are fixed. Another important thing is that on Falcon 9, the grid fins were controlled by a hydraulic system. On the Super Heavy, SpaceX is using motors and batteries from the Tesla vehicles to control their movement. The excitement is buzzing at Starbase Boca Chica, Texas, as everyone is anticipating the upcoming flight test of the Starship SN20. We will, for the first time, be seeing both the Starship and Super Heavy perform together. In fact, it will be the first time the Super Heavy lifts off. SpaceX has already filed a flight plan with the Federal Aviation Administration. The planned test flight will go something like this. The Starship SN20 will launch from the orbital launch pad at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. About three minutes into the flight, Super Heavy will separate and descend into the Gulf of Mexico off the coast from Boca Chica. Meanwhile, the upper stage Starship will continue the ascent to about 328,000 feet before landing 100 kilometers northwest of the island of Kauai in Hawaii. SpaceX has not released any more details on the flight plan until now, but according to Elon Musk, Super Heavy Booster 4 will perform the flight test. The now-ready Super Heavy Booster 3 will only be used for ground tests. SpaceX removed Starship 20 from the launch pad on August 12th. This was, according to Elon, due to some remaining work that needed to be done on the SN20. Some small plumbing and wiring tasks needed to be completed, and those tasks were easier to do in the high bay. High bay is the SpaceX large enclosure working station at the Boca Chica facility, where engineers and technicians can easily work on these large rockets. Starship and the Super Heavy both were assembled there. Technicians also inspected the heat shields on Starship SN20 and are replacing any broken, chipped, loose tiles. The process is very careful and slow, as not to damage other tiles as they do it. The Starship will be returning to the launch pad. The SN20 feels like it is ready to make history. The majestic Starship is sitting on the launch pad getting ready for the first ever flight test with the full Starship apparatus deployed with it. This test would be instrumental to the Starship program as a successful flight will boost everyone's confidence in the Starship.